I call this meeting of the Northeast Independent School District to order. Let the record show that a quorum of board members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. The board will now adjourn into executive session pursuant to the following sections of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Texas Government Code Section 551.071, private consultation with the board's attorney, 551.072, discussing purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property, 551.074, to, dis to discuss personnel or to hear complaints against personnel, and the time is 530. The board will now reconvene into open session. The time is 630. On behalf of the trustees, I would like to welcome you to this evening's meeting of the Northeast Independent School Board. This is a business meeting of the board held in public. We appreciate your attendance and request your respectful attention. We welcome your comments during the matters from the floor section of the agenda. If you signed up to address a specific action agenda item, you will be called at that time. Finally, I would like to remind you that it is the mission of Northeast to challenge and encourage each student to achieve and demonstrate academic excellence, technical skills, and responsible citizenship. Item five, invocation and pledge of allegiance, A, Garner Middle School, Mr. Bajeskel. Good evening, Madam President and board members, Dr. Micah and executive staff. It is my pleasure and honor to introduce two outstanding student leaders and their families who are with us this evening representing an excellent school in our district and community. This evening's invocation is um, given by an outstanding young man named Jude Williams. Jude excels in many areas of our school. He is in our gifted and talented program in both English and in math, and he takes pre-AP classes for all of his other core classes. In addition to academics, he's also an active videographer in our simulcast class. And in addition to academics, he also is dedicated to being a leader among his peers. He has a positive attitude, and his teachers say that he gives 100% effort in all of his classes every day. Jude it was also one of my principal award nominees um, in the sixth grade and received that award at the end of the school year. Um, joining Jude this evening to help celebrate and support this young man's achievement are his parents, Martin and Celeste, and his sister, Ava, who is also a sixth grader at Garner. Leading us in the pledges tonight is another outstanding student, Allison Garcia Vargas. Academically, Allison also excels in all of her classes. Um, she is taking pre-AP classes for all of her core subjects and is also in our dual language program. Allison is another example of a well-rounded student as she excels in our fine arts program as an excellent musician in our award-winning orchestra. Her teachers say that she is a delight to have in class and is also a great role model among her peers. Allison is also an active and very successful student athlete in volleyball, basketball, track, um, soccer, and also tennis. Joining Allison this evening to celebrate and support this young lady's achievements are her parents, Giovanni and Zulma, her sister, Jocelyn and Gladys, and her brother, Aiden, and a family friend, Eduardo Villalobos. At this time, Jude will lead us in the invocation, and following him will be Allison to lead us in the pledges. Please stand. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather here today, please give the Northeast Independent School District and Board of Trustees the continued strength and wisdom to govern our school district with sound decisions that help to ensure a safe and successful learning environment for all students. Please bless these wonderful people who volunteer to do so much for our schools. I'm grateful for being a student at Garner Middle School under the leadership of the Northeast Independent School District. In your name we pray, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, 
one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one indivisible. Jude and Allison, would you please come forward? We have some certificates for you. Dr. Micah and Mr. Byer will present them for you, and then we're going to take a picture. It was a great invocation. Thank you very much. I want to thank you all for being here. Um, if you would like to go home, you may, because I bet you have some homework that you need to do since you're excellent students. But you're welcome to stay, whatever you would like to do. It's your choice. All right, hurry, run. Thank you again. You did an awesome job. Item six, matters from executive session. A, personnel, including but not limited to administrative appointments, Pursuant to Government Code Section 551.074, one possible action regarding routine personnel, including but not limited to administrative appointments, no action. Item two, introductions, Dr. Micah. Thank you, Madam President. So we have several introductions tonight, uh, many assistant principals. So assistant principals, when I read your introduction, if you would please stand. Uh, then I'm going to ask you to introduce any family members that you've brought with you, and then at the end, we're going to take a group picture with all of the assistant principals, all right? So the first introduction I have is Andrew Cluett. Andrew joined the Northeast family in 2013. He credits his wife and kids as his reason for entering education. He saw the amazing impact his wife also an NEISD educator, had on children's future and wanted to do the same. Prior to being named an assistant principal at MacArthur High School, Mr. Cluett was a teacher at Johnson High School. Mr. Cluett received a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering in 1998 from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. He earned a master's degree in engineering management in 2004 from Air Force Institute of Technology and second master's degree in educational leadership in 2014 from St. Mary's University. Mr. Cluett wants the MacArthur students to see the value and benefits of hard work and experience success. He wants the community to know he is there for them and will bring pride to their school. Mr. Cluett has five years in education. Congratulations. <laughs> Do you bring anybody with you? Uh, my new dad, Mr. You didn't want to stand, Pete? <laughs> All right. Next, Manuel Contreras. Prior to ed entering education, Mr. Contreras worked with social service organizations that provided vital, responsive services to the greater San Antonio community and felt it would be a natural transition to the education profession. He wants to educate parents and children on issues that might prevent a child from reaching their true potential and believes public education is his true calling. Prior to being named an assistant principal at the head of middle school, he was the assistant principal at Long's Creek Elementary School. Mr. Contreras received a bachelor's degree in psychology in 1994 
from Texas A&M University Corpus Christi. He earned a master's degree in counseling in 2002 from the University of Texas at San Antonio and a second master's degree in curriculum and instruction in 2003 from the University of Texas at San Antonio. Students will feel secure and interconnected within a vibrant learning community as he works shoulder to shoulder with each member of the head of community. Mr. Contreras joined the Northeast family in 2001. Congratulations, my love. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good call not calling her your mother. <laughs> good call, Manuel. You passed the first test. <laughs> uh, the next introduction is the new assistant principal at White Middle School, Gregory Hilbig. All right. Gregory joined the Northeast family in 2009. He has a passion for serving others and was led to education to fulfill a need to continuously learn. He wants the students of White Middle School to experience excitement and be eager to come through the school doors each and every day. Prior to being named an assistant principal at White, Element, uh, whoops, at White, he was a transition facilitator at Northeast ISD Transition Services. Mr. Hilbig received a bachelor's degree in psychology in 2008 from the University of Texas at San Antonio. He earned a master's degree in education in 2011 from the University of Texas at San Antonio. He feels very fortunate to serve the community where he grew up and is invested in the success of the students and the neighborhood they share. Mr. Hilbig has 10 years in education. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, the assistant, another assistant principal at White Middle School, Nicole Monet. <laughs> Nicole was a teacher at White Middle School prior to being named an assistant principal at, at White. Miss Monet has 10 years in education. She entered education to ensure all of her students receive an opportunity of a first-rate learning experience in a safe and emotionally supportive environment. She is rewarded when she sees students and teachers who have faced academic, social, and emotional challenges grow. Ms. Monet received a bachelor's degree in biology in 1999 from Dillard University. She earned a master's degree in education administration in 2017 from Concordia University. She wants Ed White students to have a sense of safety while spreading their wings in academia, athletics, and the arts. She will be a servant leader while creating, promoting, and cultivating opportunities for student success, which will benefit the community as a whole. Ms. Monet joined the Northeast family in 2012. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, good job. Assistant Principal at Camelot and Walsham Elementaries, Melissa Mendina Hodigy. Did I do it? Was I close? Howdy. 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 I was close. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa joined the Northeast family in 2008. Prior to being named the Assistant Principal at Camelot and Walsham Elementary Schools, she was a teacher at Roan Forest Elementary School. She believes making an impact in students' lives is the most rewarding job ever, and her mission has always been to be their champion. I'm just not, I'm, how did you? Did I say it right? How did you? Gosh. Miss How did you wants students to experience success in and out of the classroom, have fun, be inspired, and be challenged while feeling safe and loved. She received a bachelor's degree in interdisciplinary studies in 2002 from Texas A&M University. <laughs> I was, was pausing. He was waiting. Whoop. <laughs> she earned a master's degree in education administration in 2012 from Texas A&M University, San Antonio. She has 17 years in education. Congratulations. <laughs> Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> 
All right, the new assistant principal at Hardy Oak Elementary is Roxanne Jenke. <laughs> Roxanne credits her mother, who she watched dedicate herself to ad advocate for children as a teacher. As a product of NEISD, Ms. Jenke believes education is her calling, fostered by the many inspirational teachers, counselors, and administrators in her life. She is honored and humbled to serve at Hardy Oak and wants her students to feel they belong, feel safe, and know they are part of an extended family. Prior to being named the assistant principal at Hardy Oak Elementary School, she was the librarian at Lopez Middle School. Also got me on an interview. <laughs> she joined the Northeast family in 2008. Ms. Jenke received a bachelor's degree in interdisciplinary studies in 1997 from Texas A&M University. She earned, good time, there, you did a good job on that one. She earned a master's degree in library science in 2010 from Sam Houston State University. Ms. Jenke has 18 years in education. Congratulations. The new assistant principal at Jackson Keller and Bolverde Elementary Schools, Nicole Rich. <laughs> Nicole joined the Northeast family in 2017. Prior to being named the assistant principal at Jackson Keller and Bolverde Creek, she was an instructional coach at Jackson Keller Elementary School. A first generation college graduate, she was personally impacted by influential educators who believed in her and helped her to become who she is today. Ms. Rich received a bachelor's degree in psychology in 2004 from the University of Texas at San Antonio. She earned a master's degree in education in 2007 from the University of Texas at San Antonio. She believes it is a privilege and honor to serve the Jackson Keller Bolverde communities and wants her students to experience a safe and engaging learning environment. Ms. Rich has 15 years in education. Congratulations. The new assistant principal at Longs Creek Elementary, Brian Sylvia. <laughs> Brian entered education to impact children's lives and help foster a love for music. Thanks to his parents, who are also educators, he realized he had found his calling. He joined the Northeast family in 2009. Prior to being named an assistant principal at Longs Creek Elementary School, he was a teacher at Wood Middle School. Mr. Sylvia wants students to experience social and emotional support and believes their academic status will improve because of the safety and security this provides. He wants his community to know that we are about educating the whole child and we will do this in partnership with them. Mr. Sylvia received a bachelor's degree in music in 2009 from the University of Texas at San Antonio. He earned a master's degree in administration in 2019 from Lamar University. Mr. Sylvia has 10 years in education. Congratulations. <laughs> and the new employee relations director for human resources, Todd Coleman. Todd is joining the Northeast family as the Employee Relations Director in the Human Resources Department. He believes his passion and commitment to serve along with his specific skills and knowledge will positively impact students and staff. Before joining, joining Northeast ISD, he was the District Hearing Officer at Northside ISD. As a leader, he leads by example and utilizes the foundation of the three C's, building capacity, communication, and creativity. For him, prudence and loyalty loyalty are always in the forefront and he looks forward to serving the Northeast ISD students and employees. Mr. Coleman received a bachelor's degree in criminal justice in 1998 from Southern University at New Orleans. Mr. Coleman has six years in education. Congratulations. <laughs> now Wait, that, oh, do you have family? Oh. 
right. <laughs> He's not here tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah, but thank you. Correct. Okay. He's not here tonight. Okay. Correct. We will bring him back at a future okay. board meeting. Okay. So that concludes my introductions. Assistant principals, Mr. Coleman, if you guys want to step forward, we're going to take a group picture. Item B, possible action. Oh, wait, do y'all want to be dismissed as well? Yes. No. They have homework. Do y'all have homework to do? Yes. The, the mass exodus. Yeah. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank y'all for being here. Really appreciate it. Uh, B, possible action on the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property pursuant to Government Code Section 551.072, no action. C, possible action regarding consultation with board's attorney pursuant to Government Code Section 551.071, one pending and or possible litigation, no action. Item 7, recognitions, A, School Health Advisory Council, SHAC, State Award, Dr. Newman. Thank you, President Grona, members of the board, Dr. Micah, executive staff and guests. We were notified that the organization It's Time Texas has awarded our SHAC committee uh, as a winner for, we're one of five districts in the state of Texas to receive this award and to explain this award, who can do a much better job than I can, <laughs> is Mrs. Naylor. Good evening, everyone. Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Micah and executive staff. Since 2014, It's Time Texas has recognized five schools, school health advisory councils annually from a pool of applicants from across the state. Criteria for the application includes number of active council members, number of participating students and parents, frequency of meetings, reporting practices, number of issue areas addressed, and accomplishments during the school year. As Dr. Newman already said, NISD was recognized in 2016 and received notice this past summer that NEISD would again be recognized this year in 2019. Highlights that were shared during the application process, I figured it'd be better to have some pictures than just listen to me. The NEISD School Health Advisor Council was 50 adult and 29 student members strong. 29 parents, two board of trustees who serve as non-voting members, and at least one student representative from each of our 21 secondary campuses made the NEISD shack one of the largest in Texas. The four adult SHAC committees were focused on completing their district <laughs> recommendations for campus wellness and health improvement for the 2017-2019 school years and creating new recommendations for the 2019 and 21 school years. The recommendations are based on campus school health index data that is completed every two years by our campuses. Our SHAC is passionate about making a difference in meaningful and impactful ways that campuses actually need. The SHI data has helped guide the SHAC tremendously in their endeavors. Learning to grill for our KSHAC student members sponsored by the Texas Beef Council was the, one of the major highlights last year. As you can tell, I will never top this night again. Um, Mr. Byer's son is on KSHAC and he made sure that he knew he ate steak <laughs> that night. <laughs> we also spearheaded the It's Time Texas Community Challenge and winning the State Metro School District title. 
Colonial Hills accepted that award for us because they turned over 30,000 points in for that challenge. We also started a new practice in our shack this year. We did teacher and program and department spotlights. This is Susie Bleacher, one of our health teachers at Tejeda with her principal, David Crow, that we spotlight, spotlighted at the beginning of our shack meeting. And then one of our greatest accomplishments, we get to celebrate our k -Shack students, which this year I think we're gonna be about 35 k -Shack students strong. We graduated two of our k -Shack students this past year. Tonight, our SHAC parent chair, Mrs. Catherine Sanchez Rocha, is present, as well as several other, several other SHAC members, and they've already been told they have to stand. So if you will please stand at this time, SHAC members. Good job, Wally McCampbell. Uh, Chief McCampbell. If you can please join me in a round of applause, recognizing the NEIC SHAC for winning the 2019 It's Time Texas State uh, SHAC Advisory State Award. Awesome, that's, that's it. Awesome. Do we have That was awesome, and thank you for everything that you do for Shaq. We really appreciate it. And you too, Rachel. All right, item eight, presentations. A, school nutrition customer service initiatives. Mr. Clary. Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Micah, executive staff and guests. Ms. Glosson, the executive director for school nutrition, uh, is at the podium to make this presentation. Hi, good evening, and thank you for the opportunity for School Nutrition to present about some of the initiatives that we have ongoing to, to help serve our community and our students. And we put together just a very short presentation about some of the things that we do that you may or may not be aware of. Mm -hmm. um, but some quick facts to get started. It's a very large department. We have over 650 employees in the department. Um, and of course, you approve our budget annually and it's um, growing each year with the programs that we expand. We, we not only serve breakfast and lunch, but many people don't know that we serve supper at the majority of our schools as well as snacks. We have an extensive summer meal program that we're gonna talk about in a few minutes. And then we also have a fresh fruit and vegetable program grant from the government that operates in schools that are selected by the grant, as well as the community eligibility provision, which is the program where all students eat for free with no application necessary. Another thing that's really unique to Northeast ISD, which is the only one in the city, is we have a district chef. That's not necessarily the unique part, but we also pair that with four dietitians that are on staff full time. And so we are the only department in the city that has those resources available. And so some of the initiatives that we're gonna talk about tonight, the main one is um, the Graduated Senior Refund Project, which is new to our district this year. The Summer Meal Program, which has been in operation for more than 10 years. Our Meals for Shields Program, which was new last year. Our Community Eligibility Provision, again, where all students eat for free, and that's been expanding each year over the last four years. And our Share Tables. And so our Graduated Senior Refund Project, which started this last summer, is we have every year, of course, we have a large number of students who graduate, and they many times leave with a positive balance in their cafeteria account, and some of them, quite honestly, just forget about that money, and so we decided to reach out to these families and say, how can we help you know, either refund the money to you, transfer it to a sibling who's still in school, or would you like to donate that money to students who may not have the funds for meals? And so we had over 6,000 students who graduated with a positive balance. And so I do have to say that from June to now, we're still working down the list. Um, it's quite a lot of calls to make, but um, we have 
contacted many of the families and as of August 20th you can see that we've already been able to get back to these families almost twenty thousand um, dollars or as you can see seventeen hundred dollars was already donated and so our community has been very generous and that money is going to go for a great cause throughout the year our summer meal program again is not new but we keep trying to expand it and how can we reach more and more children who are without the free meals during the summer and so we don't just uh, serve meals in our schools. We serve meals, as you can see in the picture, in public libraries throughout the city. We serve meals um, at city pools, at Morgan's Wonderland, as well as through our bus that goes and visits neighborhoods every day to serve the students in that neighborhood. And so another thing that we are really proud of is that in 2019, we served over 100,000 meals um, to our community. And a lot of our families um, are very grateful for the program and they may live in areas where there's not a lot of assistance available because they're in an area where it's not seen as a high need area and so for example this library at the corner of Judson and Nacogdoches um, a lot of people don't think of that as a high need area but we have many students on free and reduced lunch in that area um, and then we also decided how can we benefit the whole family because this program is only for children and we know many times the parents are hungry and just because the kids are getting free food it doesn't help the parents with their hunger issues so we were able to partner with the food bank and give away 400 bags of produce for free to our families who were participating um, so that was a lot of fun meals for shields was new last year and you heard a lot about it um, we partnered with the area law enforcement officers and we invited them to come into our elementary schools and eat lunch with our students for free and communicate with them and build relationships and so we had 30 campuses that had at least one visit from an officer and we were able to give out a total of 138 meals last year and so it's great we've already had some officers visiting this year so far lastly our community eligibility provision again is a program where all students are able to eat at no cost without filling out an application and it's our fourth year of the program and this year we were able to increase the program to a variety of middle schools and so we have a total of 29 campuses on the program and then we have the pre-k academy at west avenue that also all students eat for free through a different pre-k program and so we've seen the increase in the number of meals that are served even though a lot of these children already qualified for free meals they weren't necessarily taking advantage of it possibly because of the stigma of um, the free meals only for children who qualified so now we see even more students eating even in these very high need schools and it's really great that the cashier is no longer having to have a negative conversation with the student about needing money um, they're not having to be bill collectors in the front office of the school calling families and asking for them to pay and it's just increased the positive communication that we have going on as well as the revenue to school nutrition as we feed more students we get more revenue um, and so it's a really a win-win for everybody for the families as well as the school district and um, we're just really excited to be able to offer it to almost half of our schools and I tried to keep it really brief um, but does anybody have any questions about school nutrition? Does anyone have any questions? I've got, I've got, I want, go ahead. You go I, ahead. I just want to say thank you for um, bringing that information because Dr. Micah had told me about the um, senior refund thing and I thought that was the coolest thing yeah. that we had started that. Mm -hmm. And so I appreciate you coming and presenting about this because y'all are doing amazing things um, for our kids and families and so thank you very much for everything that you do but sorry to interrupt no that's Bye. okay I, I think <laughs> I was gonna say I, I think the programs are fantastic um, and what is the potential plan to go forward with that beyond yeah. like the like the community the um, community eligibility el eligibility well we've really probably about hit our our threshold or because we do have to have a certain amount of students that qualify in order to be eligible for the program. And so every year we look at the data to see who we can possibly add to the program. But we, we might be at the threshold because as you go up to the high school level, there's more and more students and the, the qualifying students get less and less. 
but every year we look at it because we would love to add more, more campuses. I think it's a great program. I just, just curious, get questions occasionally about what, what's going on with that and how many schools are going to get it. Good information. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank you for publicizing the, the bus again this summer because I love that bus, the books and lights or whatever it's called. Yeah, that's I think it's the cutest thing. And I've just really enjoyed over the last few years being able to share that story when I'm out visiting other districts and stuff. So it's it's a great thing you're doing there. So thanks. And thanks to transportation. Anytime. I'll be glad to help serve. I won't be driving it. No, no driving. <laughs> but I'll serve. Or pass out books. Yeah, that would be funny. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you again. Thank you. I appreciate it. Item B, Administrative Training Program Graduates 2018-2019, Dr. Newman. Thank you, President Grona, members of the board, Dr. Micah, executive staff and guests. At this time, Dr. Justin Oxley, our, one of our executive directors for school administration, will introduce you to last year's administrative interns, this year's graduates. Good evening, Madam President, board members, Dr. Micah, executive staff, and guests. Just over one year ago, last year's incoming administrative intern cohort members were introduced to you. It is now my pleasure to introduce those who completed the program. We are very proud of what they have accomplished and they are proof that our district is in very good hands in the future. Will this year's graduates of the program please come forward as their names are called. Carrie Bagley, fifth grade ham teacher, hyper accelerated math, Longs Creek Elementary School. Stephanie Barubi, academic dean, Eisenhower Middle School. The next two candidates were not able to join us. Amy Bright, fourth grade teacher, Cibolo Green Elementary School, and Crystal Brooks, counselor, Lopez Middle School. Courtney Busby, math teacher, Madison High School. Samantha Canales, assistant principal, Eisenhower Middle School. TJ Click could not join us, but he's an assistant principal at Thousand Oaks Elementary School. Wright Daggett, art teacher at our Data Magnets program at Roosevelt High School. Edward Garcia could not join us this evening. He is the assistant principal at Garner Middle School, as well as Le Leah Fickle. She was not able to join us. She's the assistant principal at Roosevelt High School. John Guayardo, assistant principal, Eisenhower Middle School. Melissa Gallion, Reading, English teacher, Eisenhower Middle School. Gregory Hilbig, assistant principal, Ed White Middle School. Corey Holtz, reading, ESL teacher, Nimitz Middle School. Roxanne Jenke, assistant principal, Hardy Oak Elementary School. Lauren Kratzenberg, fourth grade ESL teacher, Camelot Elementary School. Beverly Leppards, Director of Testing, Testing Services Department. Teresa Lawrence could not join us. She is a special ed resource teacher at Oak Meadow Elementary School. Kimberly McBride, fifth grade science teacher, Thousand Oaks Elementary School. Nicole Monet, Assistant Principal, Ed White Middle School. Amanda Morris, music teacher, Bulverde Creek Elementary School. Catherine Perkins was not able to join us, fifth grade teacher at Northwood Elementary School. Robert Potts was not able to join us this evening, sixth grade science teacher, Wood Middle School. Jessica Powers, assistant principal, Wood Middle School. Jessica Riley, assistant principal, Pre-K Academy at West Avenue. Ismael Rodriguez, math teacher, Johnson High School. Karen Schramm, English teacher, Lee High School. Krista Stacy, English teacher, Eisenhower Middle School. 
Melanie Striffler, eighth grade reading teacher, Lopez Middle School. Christopher Vasquez, CTE teacher, Churchill High School. Walanda Whitaker, assistant principal, Madison High School. I give you the 2018-19 administrative interns. Congratulations to you all. <laughs> well, they doing yay as they walk it. Item 9, Board Business A, Possible Action Regarding Nomination for Bear Appraisal District Board of Directors for 2020-2021. Um, we are going to not take action on this item. It looks like we have until October, at least October 1st and October 15th. And I know um, we have a board meeting at the end of the month. So um, we're going to wait and do that then. Item 10, new business for possible board action. A, board policy. One, possible action regarding board policy update 113, second and final reading. Ms. King. Good evening, Madam President, board members, Dr. Micah, executive staff and guests. We bring to you this evening for second and final approval update 113. If you have any questions, we'll be glad to answer them at this time. If not, we request the board's approval on the second and final reading of update 113. Does anybody have any questions or comments regarding this? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the second and final reading of attached local policies included in update 113? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Hosso. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Winkley. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose the motion carries. Item B, instruction in campus administration. One, possible action regarding nominee for Wall of Heroes enshrinement. Dr. Newman. Thank you, President Grona, members of the board, Dr. Micah, executive staff and guests. At this time, we bring you a name for your approval for enshrinement at the Wall of Heroes. We're bringing forward the name Muriel McDonald, former NAISD board member. Mrs. McDonald, when she was young, was committed to the World War to effort, but she, and she left Northwestern University to join special, special services, later went back to college, earned three degrees, including her master's, while raising six children. Former NEISD teacher, she taught for more than 30 years at all levels, including 17 at NEISD, one year at Roosevelt, 16 at Churchill. She was named Teacher of the Year her last year there. After retiring, she was the first ever teacher and Northeast teacher elected to the school board, where she served two terms. She served as a founding member of ACE Corporate Council. She passed away in 2014 after dedicating her entire life to education. So we ask that the board approve Muriel McDonald, Muriel selected McDonald. by the se selection committee for enshrinement on the Wall of Heroes at Heroes Stadium. Does anybody have any questions or comments regarding that? 
That's an impressive resume. It is an impressive resume. She was such a sweetheart. She's a neat lady. Okay. The committee um, was very impressed with her background. I have a question. Is it Muriel? Muriel, M-U-R-I-E-L, Ruth McDonald. Muriel McDonald. Okay. I'm sorry, Terry. Was it unanimous? The set, we followed the updated CW local and the second round of voting, it was unanimous. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, it was the majority. I think it, there was one other name, but the rest were for her. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Okay. All right, do I have a motion to approve Muriel McDonald Selected by the Selection Committee for Enshrinement on the Wall of Heroes at Hero Stadium. So move. Thank you, Mrs. I'll second. Have a second. Thank you, Mr. Hosso. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose the motion carries. Um, and thank you to the committee members who served on doing that. Mm -hmm. We don't have any of those here. Do we? Okay. Um, item C, business services. One, possible action regarding adoption of 2019-2020 tax rates. Mr. Villarreal. Uh, yes, Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Mike, executive staff and guests, I call on Brian Moy, our executive director of finance and accounting, uh, to talk about this topic. Good evening, Madam President, board members, Dr. Mike, executive staff and guests. Uh, this is the annual item where you are going to levy tax rates, uh, maintenance and operations, for the general operating fund and the interest and sinking rate for the debt service fund. Uh, just to let you know that because of House Bill 3 and the tax compression, this uh, overall rate is about 5% lower than uh, what it was last year. Now an individual homeowner may not see the reduction. It also depends on what their property was appraised at. So if their property value went up by more than 5%, they're not gonna see a reduction in their taxes. Um, and just to let you know, this brings in about $400 million to the general fund and about $132 million to the debt service fund. Uh, and unlike prior years, really so they've taken out the section of education code that requires you to approve this by reading a sentence in exact verbiage. So all you have to do is ask for an approval of the, or, of the, uh, of the ordinance. I'm not sure I know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? When you say 5% reduction, that's the, the total dollar twenty nine or the well, just the M&O? No, that's a, of, of the do, a total dollar uh, twenty nine compared to uh, what would have been last year, dollar thirty six. Thirty six. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? I just I just have a comment, and I think that's a good point you you made because a lot of folks will see their taxes increase and immediately think, oh, well, the school district must have raised taxes or, or the tax rate, which is not the case. Their appraised value probably, you know, if they're not seeing that reduction or they're seeing a, a higher um, cost, their appraised value probably went up, um, you know, which increased. And, you know, I tell, I would tell folks in that case, you need to you know, go and, and um, protest. protest, thank you, protest that. And the district has nothing to do with you. Right, right, right. and we have nothing to do with that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. Anything else, anybody else? All right, so do I have a motion to adopt the attached ordinance levying the maintenance and operations and interest in seeking taxes for the 2019-2020 year? So move. Thank you, Mrs. Williams, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Byer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose the motion carries. Thank you, Brian. Or you're Don't up go the far. Next. <laughs> Don't go far. Don't leave. Item two, possible action regarding agreement for the purchase of attendance credits. Do I have to say your name? No, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Just point. So as, uh, House Bill 3... Uh, funny, they eliminated Chapter 41 from the Education Code, but they did not eliminate recapture. They simply moved uh, moved it to Chapter 49, um, and they they tried to eliminate the terms Robin Hood and recapture. And they're now they're trying to call it excess local revenue. Uh, 
because you know we have excess revenue just yeah, laying around. Just so um, Let me check my purse. So, but this is to let you know just as it was in the prior law, even though we are not a recapture district, and now after House Bill Three, we do not expect to be a recapture district for several years. Um, you are still required to approve the agreement for purchase of attendance credits. Basically, that says had you in the last item levied an uh, MNO tax rate greater than a dollar one, we may have had to have paid money back to the state. So I've asked TEA, it's like, we're not going to do it. Why do we have to prove it? Yeah, because it, because we say so. Okay. Well, then that's why and we so do And so do it. we have to vote on this every year, saying that we yes. know that we might, but we won't? So and we, we have every year since 2007 or eight. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense to me. Does anybody have any questions about this? Okay. Um, do I have a motion to approve the attached agreement for the purchase of attendance credits? So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Winkley. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose the motion carries. Thank you, Brian. Item D, consent. One, business services. A, effective and rollback tax rates. B, certified appraisal roll. C, waiver of penalties and interest. D, donations. E, budget amendment number one, F, 50,000 purchases. Two, operations. A, professional services contracts, construction contracts, and related contract amendments supporting the 2015 bond design and construction requirements. Three, minutes from May 2019. Four, end of consent. Do I have a board member wishing to pull item from consent? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve consent? So moved. Ooh. Ooh. I'll give it to Dave. I think I heard it out of my right ear first. <laughs> Mr. Hosso, do I have a second? Mr. Byer? Second. All those, I hear better out of my right ear, I think. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the motion carries. Item 11 reports A, financial statement review of expenditures that's been provided for you. B, quarterly investment report that's been provided for you. C, awarded bid report that's been provided for you. Item 12, matters from the floor. We've had no one sign up. Item 13, discussion and possible action regarding board members' request for items to be placed on a future agenda and our request for reports from the administration. Anyone have anything? David has nothing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting all night for that. We need just once. Just need one. Um, item 14, adjournment, and the time is 7.22. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Yeah,